Hey you guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I will be doing my end of the year recap for my fifth grader. If any of you are new here to my channel, again, my name is Brittany. I'm a homeschooling mom to three girls and I just finished my third year of homeschool. So you guys, I'm so excited to make this video, really recapping my fifth graders homeschooling year, uh, really talking about all of the things that uh, I feel like I did well this homeschooling year, some of my regrets, and over overall giving you like an overview of the curriculum that we used, um, some of my highs and some of our lows. So um, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and get into this thing because I know this one is going to be a lengthy one because I definitely want to make sure I really give you guys a thorough uh, review and recap over our overall homeschooling year. I love looking back at these videos and seeing all the things that we got up to each year and um, they're really, really fun for me to film. So First and foremost, the things that I feel that went well for us this homeschooling year was definitely our uh, homeschooling schedule. We did the Sabbath homeschooling schedule, you guys, where we did the six weeks on, one week off, and it was amazing. I really felt like at the end of those six weeks, I was able to uh, really recap and see some of the things that went well, some of the things that didn't go well. I was really able to pivot in like our daily flow and uh, maybe some adjustments in our curriculum that we use that uh, term. And it was was really really great for me to have that week off for Brielle when she had that week off I really feel like she began to really uh, get the opportunity to be creative and do like a lot of interest led learning in that week off that we had because of our schedule so she did a lot of creative writing during that time when we had our week off uh, Brielle really really enjoyed learning how to use procreate where she was able to do like her own cover pages and illustrations to her creative writing stories and just really making some uh, fun creations on there as well. Um, she did a lot of piano and just a lot of things she was interested in on those weeks off and I really really feel like I was able to squeeze out all of like the freedom and the flexibility we do have in homeschooling by doing that schedule and that's something that is definitely not changing in the upcoming homeschool year. Another thing that I really feel like um, I did well this homeschooling year and the things that I was really, really proud of myself was that I over, overall, you guys, I feel like I slowed down. Um, I feel like uh, when I first started off our homeschooling year, I was like, bam, 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 rushing, rushing, trying to get everything in our, you know, homeschooling day. And I really feel like I was pushing Brielle to the limit. But I definitely feel as we hit like our second six week term, I really began to slow down and enjoy that flexibility of our new uh, Sabbath homeschooling schedule and I'm really really happy uh, that those things worked out. Something else that worked out very well for us this homeschooling year was Brielle's student planner. You guys this was just a free student planner that I found online. I will go ahead and link it down below but what Brielle pretty much did was she uh, had an opportunity like to decorate her homeschooling planner to write all of the things that she was doing for each day and I really feel like this planner really gave Brielle like a sense of independence because she knew what she had to do each day and she didn't have to wait on me. This really allowed me the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one without any interruptions with my younger kiddos because Brielle had a list. She knew what she had to do and I really feel like this gave her an overall good sense of like independence and I really feel like once we started giving uh, Brielle this student planner, she really took off in a lot of her core work. I really was coming in on the back and helping her. The only subjects I really taught Brielle this year was really grammar science and history the rest of her core was really video led and I really came in on the back end just helping her uh, assist her in her education and I think she really enjoyed this um, independent student planner that she had you guys I enjoyed my school nest planner you guys I really really enjoyed uh, doing my weekly reflections my weekly recaps I really enjoyed all of the sections that uh, Megan has in the school nest planner. Um, it was really, really amazing for me to be able to like recap each week to set uh, realistic weekly goals for us in our home in my homeschool planner. And really just looking back at some of the recaps that I had, you guys, it's so amazing. Um, all of the things that I've seen that we got up to each year or each week. And um, now that our end of the year is over, you guys, this bad boy is pretty fat. But I really, really enjoyed using uh, planners this homeschooling year. 
Now, some of the things that I regret for this homeschooling year is definitely, I really feel like I wish I would have simplified my homeschool curriculum sooner. Um, I really feel like since I put out my fifth grade homeschool curriculum picks in February, a lot of things changed from February into August when we really kickstarted our homeschooling year. And I really wish I would have took my time in selecting some of the curriculum choices because I feel like I probably wouldn't have have had um, changes that I had. Um, overall, I feel like this year I had the least amount of changes that I have had in my past two years as far as curriculum goes. I feel like most of the things that I um, started off my homeschooling year with, we pretty much ended with. We had a few pivots, but not too many. Um, and overall, I am proud of that. I'm proud, of, I'm proud that we didn't have really big, big, big uh, switches and things like that this homeschooling year. Uh, but I will say that um, I really wish I would have have took my time and I wish I would have simplified our homeschooling curriculum sooner. Um, another thing too that I regret, I regret doing a spelling curriculum for Brielle this homeschooling year because uh, when I tested her, uh, after the end of her fourth grade year, she tested very, very well in spelling. And I knew by watching her that, you know, she was pretty much, she pretty much mastered spelling uh, phonetically. And I don't know why I felt the need to do a spelling curriculum. I really wish I would have focused more on vocabulary, which was one of her weaker areas this homeschooling year and really honed in on that. Um, I think I just did a spelling curriculum because, you know, she still was in elementary school and I felt like I needed to do a spelling curriculum, but I really should have looked at her skill level and followed that instead of doing a spelling curriculum. I loved our spelling curriculum we used, but she really didn't need it. Another one of my regrets is I wish we were able to do more field trips, but I really have to be realistic in a season of life that I'm in. Um, I do have a three and a five year old. And when we started off our homeschooling year, they were two and four. And um, it's really, really hard, you know, wrangling <laughs> two toddlers with you going places. Now that they are older and potty trained, I definitely know our upcoming homeschool year, we definitely will have more opportunities for field trips. And I really need to give myself a little bit more grace when it comes to that and um, another thing that I have my last regret is I wish we would have did more literature studies because Brielle really really enjoyed like analyzing literature um, and things like that and I didn't realize that that was something she enjoyed um, so I really wish I would have put in and carved out more time for us to really do uh, like more literature studies and literature guides when it came to like our uh, read alouds. So you guys, let's go ahead and get into all of the curriculum. I have it broken down. I have curriculum which is all over the place and I'm gonna go ahead and briefly give you an overview on uh, what we finished, what we didn't finish, what we loved and what we didn't love. Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and get on into math. So when we started off our fifth grade homeschooling year, we were wrapping up Saxon 6-5. We started Saxon 6-5 January of 2022. So we completed Saxon 6-5 in September of 2022. So uh, Saxon, you guys, I have so many videos on Saxon on my channel. I'll link them down below. I love Saxon. It's tried and true. It just didn't fit well with Brielle once we got into Saxon 7-6. We started Saxon 7-6 in October of 22 and we went, we uh, stopped Saxon in January. So we worked in it for were good with so that's what October November December and a little bit of January so we worked in it for a good three months um, I really was pushing Brielle when it came to Saxon and really trying to make this curriculum fit for her just because six five went pretty well um, the spiral approach was uh, showing that it wasn't necessarily driving well with her particular learning style uh, when it came to her learning other concepts with the spiral she was forgetting a lot and um, I really figured that I needed to hone in and slow down math for her. Um, we're definitely getting into higher mathematics. I mean, in the next couple of years, she will be in, or not this year, but next year, she will be in pre-algebra. So I definitely knew I wanted to lay a good foundation for her before she gets into upper mathematics and Saxon was no longer working for her. So we went ahead and started Math UC Epsilon in January and I have a couple of videos uh, flip throughs um, and the reasons why we switched so I'm just going to go ahead and give you guys my final review of Matthew C. It was great. Brielle loved it. 
I love the simple approach to mathematics. I love the fact that I was able to simplify and slow down math for Brielle. Math is not necessarily Brielle's strongest subject. She's good in it once she got the like once she gets the concepts and when she's confident she's good in it. But I really started to notice with Saxon she was losing that confidence and I wanted to regain that confidence with math. I wanted to simplify it and slow it down for her and this was like the perfect curriculum for Brielle. Now uh, Saxon math you see you guys they're both very very, very tried and true curriculums. I stand behind both of these curriculums. Um, I love Saxon still, you guys, but Matthew C is just a better fit for Brielle. Um, I loved using these Matthew C um, fraction overlays. This really allowed Brielle to hone in on um, the multiplication of fractions, division, uh, adding and subtraction, unlike common denominators. You guys, Brielle did awesome on her final exam in Matthew C. Epsilon. So I'm so proud that I made the pivot, even though I was scared because this is math. So uh, technically, this homeschooling year, she finished two math curriculum. She finished Saxon 6-5 and Epsilon. So I'm really, really proud of her. And um, I'm I was nervous about the pivot and the change, but it just worked out very well for her. So uh, that is math. Now, as far as grammar goes, you guys, we did fix it grammar this year. Our first semester, we did fix it grammar, town mouse and country mouse book two. And our second semester, we did Robin Hood book three. Now, uh, English is Brielle's strongest subject. Brielle definitely is working at like a sixth grade level right now when it comes to English. Um, so both of these books of fix it grammar, she really didn't learn anything new in. And it's not uh, anything bad about fix it grammar. It's just that Brielle is very strong and proficient in grammar. So I was really using these as independent work for her for her to remember and hone in on those grammar skills that she learned last year um we used rod and staff for last year for her and you guys she absolutely loves rod and staff and i definitely will say the bulk of brielle's grammar instructions this year as far as learning new concepts and new things came from rod and staff um we started off our homeschooling year with rod and staff five but i gave brielle the placement test because she was saying that it was too easy for her so i gave her the placement test and she placed into rod and staff six and that's why um we uh, are in rod and staff english six right now um she loves this english curriculum you guys i definitely have to do a do a lesson with you guys uh we are continuing rod and staff this summer because we made it uh through 72 lessons we made it uh 72 out of 124 lessons so we're going to finish up rod and staff six over the summer she loves it we do a lot of these lessons orally i use the dry erase board when she's diagramming her sentences and um i think she really really just loves english English. So um, Rod and Staff 6 was where she learned it and Fix It Grammar was like again that review repetition of the skills that she already learned. Uh, English is just her strong subject and that's just like how Brielle jives. She wants the English. She wants all of it. As far as spelling, you guys, goes, we did 180 days of spelling and word study. I don't have anything bad to say about the spelling curriculum. It's traditional. It's tried and true. I definitely will say the spelling words in this curriculum is very, very challenging. Um, and I loved the challenge for her. I definitely was able to see how proficient she was in spelling. And to really be honest, I wish I would have uh, focused more on vocabulary for Brielle this homeschooling year. Um, like I said before, because she is really, really strong in spelling. Um, what I did to go ahead and utilize uh, the vocabulary and word study portion of this program was um, we used our um, school nest fifth grade notebook. And what I was doing was um, I was making Brielle write sentences in her in context. Typically, um, I will have her write all of her uh, vocabulary words and spelling words in sentences in this school nest notebook. So that was how we was ending it off. And towards the end, she was definitely able to write the vocabulary vocabulary words in context and I feel like I was able to uh, really focus on the vocabulary when it came to this real kick curriculum but I really wish I would have done like word roots earlier we tried out wordly wise Brielle just didn't jive with it and I didn't want to force her to do wordly wise especially since she didn't love it I really didn't feel like it was worth it to push her to do something she didn't enjoy um so I definitely know this upcoming homeschool year I definitely am going to be focusing on vocabulary and we will be using word roots to really focus on those latin and root words and prefixes because I found that Brielle retained more words when we uh focused on the prefixes the latin and the root words than just actually memorizing a list of vocabulary words
Now for uh, Reading Comprehension. You guys, I love this Reading Detective book for Reading Comprehension. They actually use real literature passages in here in the excerpts. One of the excerpts was like uh, The Witch of Blackbird Pond. Uh, they used uh, Island of the Blue Dolphins, Where the Red Fern Grows. And they just take a lot of literature excerpts and they ask the kiddos uh, comprehension questions. Um, they really focus on that inference and skill. I'm gonna be honest, Brielle did not enjoy this book when we first started off because it was really really challenging she really had to hone in on those context clues in the literature and it wasn't just straight to the point questions for her and I really feel like um this really is a great book for that higher level thinking you guys the critical thinking company I have been sleeping on them they are awesome so this level right here is for fifth and sixth grade we've made it halfway through this uh curriculum so I definitely know um we will be uh finishing this off this upcoming homeschool year we only did reading comprehension twice a week on Mondays and on Fridays so um that's probably how I will continue to use our reading comprehension the upcoming homeschool year. As far as handwriting goes, we did handwriting without tears. Great, excellent. I love the cursive uh, that she did. Now, one thing I will say, the cursive is kind of funky. I kind of like more of the italicized cursive than the way that they teach the cursive in handwriting without tears, but it definitely lays a great foundation for the overall structure of cursive handwriting. And Brielle loved it. Um, as far as uh, writing goes, Brielle did creative writing, like I mentioned before. And here are some of Brielle's uh, short stories that she's written. She's written actually five. I only printed off four of her creative writing stories right now. Um, and again, she did a lot of creating writing in like the afternoon and especially when we had our week off so I'm really really proud of Brielle to really uh, be able to hone in on those creative writing skills and I definitely will let you know as Brielle was reading her creative writing towards the end of her homeschooling year um, her writing definitely flourished and it flourished because of of course IEW. You guys, I already made my full end of the year review of IEW, but you guys, I love this curriculum. I am so proud of Brielle. I'm so proud of the foundation that IEW laid for her as far as her writing skills. Um, I went into details in my video about IEW, all of my pros and my cons of this curriculum. But overall, you guys, I'm really, really happy with IEW. I'm happy that the writing pressure was taken off of me this homeschooling year. Uh, and I'm really, really, I'm um, just happy to see the growth in her writing she wrote 24 papers this homeschooling year and I cannot believe to you know like to say that she wrote that much but I'm so proud of her and I'm proud of all of her growth we will continue with the IEW series I'm not too sure if we're going to, to do IEW this year but next summer we definitely will uh, do another level of IEW because I'm just so like I'm blown away by the growth in her writing and I definitely seen it translated in other areas especially Especially when it came to like science and history. Um, as far as literature, you guys, we did two literature guides this year and uh, we did a Brave Writers literature guide with the Lemonade War and I actually don't have it printed off anymore because I just took out the pages that I needed. So uh, Brielle did like a lot of copy work when it came to the Brave Writers Literature Guide. Um, all of the copy work that she did, she actually used her um, school nest notebook right here uh, in doing like all the copy work. This literature guide focused a lot on like uh, slang. We talked a lot about semicolons. Um, we talked a lot about um, onomatopoeias and um, it was really, really great. All the literary devices that it did pull out I definitely will say I liked Brave Writers Literature Guide but you definitely have to do some planning when it comes to using their literature guides it's not just straight to the point and you know you have all of the things the checklist for each day you definitely have to put in the planning uh, but I did like being able to pick and choose the different elements I wanted to focus in when it came to um, the literature so I loved it but you do have to put some work in the Brave Writers Literature Guides um, so for that purpose I wanted to try another literature literature guide and I went ahead and tried Rachel's literature guide from where you learned that uh, from seven and all and this is the witch of blackbird pond literature guide and here goes the book right here and you guys I have to absolutely say this was one of my favorite yet simple literature guides that I use for Brielle she said that this was her favorite uh, before brave writer I love the independence that it gave Brielle it really gave her a lot of nuggets before starting off the story it was simple but it was enough depth for us to really uh, 
have squeezed out all the juice in this uh, book, The Witch of Blackbird Pond. We listened to it on Audible and it was great hearing like the narrator narrate this. Um, the narrator had like this British accent and it was really, really fun <laughs> us listening and following along on The Witch of Blackbird Pond. At the end of each of uh, Rachel's uh, and From Seven and All's literature guide, she does have like a little final project and Brielle decided to do like a final character sketch where she did like a quick a quick um analysis of the character's personality and she drew a picture and i thought that it was really really fun to end off our homeschool year doing this fun literature guide i didn't want her to do any of the writing assignments in the literature guide since she's done so much writing with iew i wanted her to really like analyze the literature and enjoyed it and she really really enjoyed that one Rachel from Seven Nauts uh, Literature Guides. I have a few of them. I'm not too sure if I can squeeze them into our upcoming homeschool year, but if I can squeeze them in, I definitely will because I really, really enjoy them. And um, she's coming out with even more, you guys. Now, as far as history and science, you guys, goes, we did two history curriculums. The first curriculum that we did and finished was Heart and Soul by Amber O'Neill Johnson. And I love this. This is actually a simple African-American history. The books that we read with Heart and Soul was, of course, Heart and Soul. We actually listened to this on Audible with a narrator, and it was so awesome. Um, we loved it. We also read 40 Acres and Maybe a Mule. This is a great book about the uh and after or it's actually uh, talking about african americans after the emancipation proclamation them really trying to find their footing in this new america and where they belonged after slavery and this book was so awesome age appropriate i definitely feel like um it was a great way to introduce, um, I guess, that uh, specific time and that specific era um, after the Civil War and what these newly free African Americans um, had to do to really gain their footing in America great book. We also read um, Stella by Starlight, you guys, and we listened to this one again on, um, I think this was on script. We listened to this one and it's a great book. This book actually went along with the, um, it went along during the Great Depression era and uh, it really just focused a lot on all of the hardships and things that the African Americans had to go through during the Great Depression. You guys, this was such a great and uh, inspiring story. It definitely didn't leave you feeling like down. It definitely left you feeling, I guess, inspired uh, to see the, the motivation uh, that all of these African-Americans had during this time, especially in fighting for voting rights. Brielle loved this book. It was in the perspective of Stella, who was a, a 10 year old girl and uh, Brielle loved that. So great book you guys i love that one uh brielle did a lot of um i guess copy work and narration and little short stories with all of the picture books that we read with heart and soul heart and soul i think it was a total of 26 picture books we read with this unit and after we read each picture book brielle would do some type of a uh, paragraph or summary about it uh she would maybe pick out like a quote that she enjoyed um she would probably write like a timeline so that is how we utilize our uh, history notebook now when we first started off our homeschooling year our main curriculum was beautiful feats uh American History, The Intermediate Guide, it didn't really work out well for us. And I switched over to Blossom and Root of River of Voices. And you guys, like, I love this curriculum. This curriculum, definitely, you have to <laughs> get used to the format of this curriculum. Um, it definitely is more of like a pick and choose. It's, doesn't, it's not like a schedule like Heart and Soul was where it lays out what you're going to be doing each day. Uh, it definitely gives you a plan and a guide and all of the different resources you can pick and choose from. And I think that that was the most challenging part for me when it came to Blossom and Root of River Voices was really getting used to that format. But when I got used to it, um, I did enjoy being able to pick and choose the picture books that we were going to be reading and the chapter books and the activities activities and whether I wanted to do the writing assignment for that week or not. We only made it halfway through this curriculum. We didn't get into the Revolutionary War and up into the Constitution as I wanted to in this curriculum, but I'm not too worried about it because when we are make or because our um, curriculum that we're using for the upcoming years, we will touch on these specific 
these specific time periods. So I'm not worried that we didn't finish this one. Um, but I definitely will say if I was to go back, I may have wanted to try O Freedom instead of Blossom and Root because I've seen O Freedom has more of a specific schedule. And I do think I kind of am a more specific schedule person, but then I'm not. So that's like my only con about Blossom and Root. My other con about it is that some of the literature, so they Blossom and Root has it sectioned out in a gentle path and a standard path. And sometimes I found myself straggling between the gentle path and the standard path for Brielle because I felt like the standard path was a little bit too much information when it came to American history. It's definitely not information I want to shy away from in the future, but I feel like it's too much information for right now that I do want to give her. Um, so that is my only con about it that I really had to like pivot between those two levels. Um, we also used this book before Columbus. It was great, but I really wish I would have studied ancient history before using this book. And some of the information did go over top of Brielle's heads. Uh, the other two reference books, they were really kind of like textbook-y. Um, and I really utilized more of like the picture books and the things that they selected instead of these reference books. But um, overall, I did enjoy Blossom and a River of Voices. And um, yeah, so you guys, um, Let's go ahead and briefly go over science. <laughs> uh, for science, we started off our homeschooling year using uh, Heaven and Earth's Our Universe. We completed our universe. I kind of like added in some things that I wanted to at the end. So that is kind of like how we did our space study. Brielle used her school net science notebook and she did like a lot of space um, templates and things like that when going over space. So I really loved using these books. God's Design for Heaven and Earth was this God's Design in particular, Heaven and Earth wasn't as fun as God's Design for Life. And I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Um, and that's kind of like one of the reasons why we pivoted in our science because Brielle wasn't enjoying it. And honestly, science is not my strongest subject. I really wish I would have outsourced science sooner for Brielle. Uh, in our second semester, we tried out core knowledge and we also tried out um generation genius and you guys that blend was so great for us uh we used the weather and climate from core knowledge we actually just read the reader and then we did the uh book sharks weather unit which was a free unit all this is free you guys free science <laughs> and uh we really really enjoyed studying weather and then we ended off the year doing uh earth spears which just went over the different earth spears and um you guys like I think that I found one of the sciences that I'm going to use for my younger kiddos when um, they do when they are up there because I really enjoy core knowledge um, I'm going to use another one of core knowledge's units for our summer and I definitely will kind of like update you guys more on core knowledge but at the end of the day all of these free resources ended up working out for us versus the curriculum that I actually paid for which is crazy but um, science was definitely my weakest subject again but I really feel like I found a good footing in what I'm looking for in science. And I really wish I would have used Generation Genius and Core Knowledge sooner. So you guys, I hope this video wasn't too long, but this is my end of the year curriculum review. Um, I'm really proud of us and all the accomplishments that we did this homeschooling year. I'm proud of my daughter and um, I really look forward to our upcoming homeschool years. I really feel now that I am confident in my homeschool choices and my homeschool curriculum. And I'm confident in myself as like a homeschooling mom now. And I definitely know you probably won't see many big changes on my channel anymore when it comes to curriculum because I really have learned what curriculum that I need to outsource and that I'm not the best at and what curriculum I really feel like I can take on as homeschooling mom. So this is my end of the year reflections, you guys. I really hope that it's helpful. And as always, I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one. Bye.